Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs and I know many of you know me as Glenda the Good Stitch. Today in this video, I know I'm dressed like the Black Ninja and that's because I'm going to show you how to measure yourself without a sewing buddy. Now of course it's always easier if you've got a helping hand, but it's not impossible to get all of your measurements done yourself. And of course, measuring yourself as accurately as possible is really the key to getting a good fit on any sewing pattern. For those of you who aren't familiar with SureFit Designs, and perhaps this is your first experience with one of our videos, SureFit Designs is a fitting and sewing system that does, number one, ask you to take your MADI measurements, and number two, then we use those measurements to do what I call blueprinting your body shape and size. And the resulting pattern, of course, is a replication of your measurements. And what we do with those measurements then is we apply them onto a master pattern. And the master pattern goes in a size range from 28 inches or 71 centimeters for our international customers all the way on up to 62 inches or 157.5 centimeters. So there's a very wide measurement range there for you to choose the measurement that represents you and then all you do is come in and connect your dots together like a dot to dot coloring book and the resulting pattern is this blueprint of your body. So on to measuring. To do the dress measurements what we are going to do is utilize the instruction book called the dress kit instructions and we're going to look at page four and five. Now on page four and five you'll see 11 different measurements and those are the measurements that I'm going to be showing you how to take yourself. There are a few tools that you're going to require and the first one is that you have a mirror. A triway mirror is best but if all you've got is a single mirror, then that's fine too. You're also going to require a tape measure, of course, and it's best if you can get one that's printed on both sides. You're also going to need a piece of elastic, and for this you don't want it any wider than about 3 eighths of an inch. So quarter inch wide is fine, 3 eighths is the maximum. And what you're going to do with that is tie it around your waist and then what you're going to do is walk around the house, sit down, stand up, bend over, and just get that elastic to sit comfortably in your natural waist position. Mine's as level as it can be, considering I've got a battery pack on the side of me. The other thing when you're putting this elastic around your waist is please make sure you don't tie it too tight. You don't want to be bulging on either side. And I should also mention that, yes, I am dressed like the Black Ninja, but at home, please make sure that you're measuring yourself over top of your appropriate foundation garments. So your bra slip, pantyhose, etc. And you know, ladies, when you change bra styles, the level of your uh, bust line changes and maybe the width of your apex changes. So please make sure you're using a bra that you would normally wear when you're wearing dresses and blouses. The next thing that we're going to need is a necklace or a neck chain. This is actually a piece of drapery chain. It's a very heavy weighted chain that goes in the bottom of draperies. And we actually are going to lay that around the base of our neck in order to identify our neck point. You will need some masking tape or painter's tape. And you also will need a little marking pen and of course a pencil to write your measurements down. Measurement number one is the full bust measurement. Now for this one, this is the one where it really is best if you have a helping hand. But as I said, it's not impossible to do it by yourself. What's important here is that we take the tape measure up over the back shoulder blades, the lower portion of them, and I'll just stand with my back to this other camera. So what you're trying to do is get that tape measure over the lower portion of your shoulder blades. And then you're going to take it around the fullest part of your bust line. And of course you do want to look in the mirror to make sure that you're over the lower portion of your shoulder blades and the fullest part of your bust line. 
Now, another DVD that I have called the Introductory How-To DVD actually shows me measuring a model. And what I have my model do is put her arms straight out, both of them, then I put the tape around her chest, and then I have her lower her arms down. And the reason that I do that is to see if I'm going to pick up any back expansion. Because some of you ladies have a little bit of padding back here. And you are also the ladies who, when you move within your garments, you tend to rip your seams out of your set and sleeve garments. So it's important to pick up that back expansion, but that's the hard part to do on your own. So what I want you to do is your best. So again, make sure that you're over the lower portion of your shoulder blades at the back, then go over the fullest part of your bust and look in the mirror, record that measurement or look down and record that measurement. So then when you go to draw off your body blueprint and you do your first test garment, your first test blouse or muslin, if that does feel a little bit snug in your back because we weren't able to lower the arms down to pick up back expansion, then what I'd like you to do is go to the next dot up. So if you measured 40 inches around, go to the 41 and that will give you that back expansion room that you require. Measurement number two is a waist measurement. And of course, as I said, you're going to have tied that elastic around your body and let it settle in your natural waist position. Then you will want to measure yourself in that waist area. Again, use your mirror, make sure that it's as, as parallel to the floor as possible. Now, I do know that some of you have tummies um, and waistlines that hang down. And if that's the case, you will likely want to measure yourself down at the angle of how your waist um, always sits anyway. And why this is important is because you want to make sure that you're getting enough length in your bodice to cover to wherever your waist level is. Now the opposite of that is true with the lady who tends to be the narrowest right underneath her bust line. And I've seen a number of people that are like this. They're very narrow here. And then they start to widen out and they're more like the diamond shaped hip person. Well, obviously, it wouldn't be logical to just measure to that portion of your torso in order to get a waist level. So you would never wear a blouse that short. So you have to be realistic in this measurement, uh, measuring of where you would like a blouse length or a bodice length garment to sit on your body. Measurement number three is a high hip measurement. And so for this one, we're coming down on the uh, hip line and you're going to come down approximately two to three inches down on your hip level and again looking in your mirror you're going to keep that measurement as parallel to the floor as possible and here you're going over your high hip and hip bones and you're also going over tummy area so again, make sure you keep it as parallel to the floor as possible. The next measurement that you're going to do is your low or full hip measurement. So for this one, we're going to come down into your low buttocks area. And this may be six, seven, eight, nine, or even 10 inches down below that waist elastic position. It just depends where your lowest, fullest part is. Now, I do know that some ladies are going to be fuller in their high hip area. And that's usually the heart-shaped hip person, the lady who carries her weight up in the tummy and high hip area. So this measurement down below is often referred to as the low hip measurement because it is not necessarily fuller than your high hip measurement. But irrespective of whether it's larger or smaller, then your high hip measurement, please make sure that you take that measurement as well. And again, look at yourself in the mirror and make sure that that is as level as possible and parallel to the floor. Okay, the next measurement is the middle of the shoulder to the apex. And so now we need to identify the middle of the shoulder line and we're going to measure down to the apex. 
And so to do this measurement, you're going to take a piece of painter's tape or masking tape, and you're actually going to place it on your shoulder like this, and you're going to just let that piece of tape sit on the top of your body. Again, use your mirror and try and get it as centered on your shoulder as possible. Now, when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, what you're looking for is that that piece of tape just tends to disappear to the back. And if you have a triway mirror, you may be able to see from the back of your body and it just tends to disappear to the front. Then you know you're identifying the top of your shoulder line. Then once the shoulder line has been identified, now you'll take the tape measure and measure from the middle of the shoulder line down to your apex or the highest point of your bust line. And my tape isn't staying stuck to my black ninja outfit here. Okay, middle of shoulder down to apex or the highest point of your bust. That is measurement number five. Measurement number six is from the middle of the shoulder line over the apex and down to your waist elastic. And you can just go right to the middle of your waist elastic. And measurement number seven now is waist to hem. So for waist to hem, what you're going to do now is decide where you would like your day length dresses to fit you. So is it going to be the middle of your knee, above your knee or below your knee? So take a piece of masking tape and go down and wherever you want your day length dresses to end, just put the tape right there. And I've just put it kind of in the middle of my knee. And then what you'll do is measure from the waist elastic and you can look at yourself in the mirror and if you can't see what the number is, just follow the tape measure against your body. So I'm just going to hand press it gently against my leg until I come down and I can see what my hem level is. And this is not a real critical frit measurement, so it means that you can change it when you get the uh, skirt done, you can go longer or shorter. It's a real easy measurement to change. Measurement number eight is an apex to apex measurement. And for this one now, you are going to measure from bust point to bust point to determine the width or the spread of your apex. Again, look at yourself in the mirror and look to see what looks logically as your apex or the highest point of your bust and measure the width or the spread. Now, because we are working on a half of a pattern, which is right here, we are going to take that full width measurement and divide it in half. And that's that half width measurement that you are going to record. That's measurement number 8A. Measurement 8B is that you do need to write down your bra cup size. Are you an A, B, C, D, double D, or E? And you know so many commercial patterns have only a B cup dart in them. The benefit with SureFit Designs, of course, is that we have what's called the adjust a bust template, and you can be an A, B, C, D, double D, or E cup shape and put in the right bra cup size for you. I've got a couple of different videos showing you how to use that adjust a bust template. All right, measurement number nine is shoulder length. So for this one now, I need to identify my shoulder bone and my neck point. But first of all, the shoulder bone. The best way to find your shoulder bone is to put your arm straight out and with your opposite hand, come over and feel the top of your shoulder bone. And I do know some of you have a little bit of padding up there and it might not be that easy to find your shoulder bone. So with your opposite hand in front of your shoulder or on top of your other shoulder, just keep your finger on the shoulder bone and then lower your arm coming down. And you should be able to feel the action of your arm in that joint up at the top and it's that top of the shoulder bone that you want to identify. And so now you have a marker 
And with your opposite hand, I'm not left-handed, so I'm going to be as close and as careful as possible. I want to make a mark that indicates the top of my shoulder bone. And again, this is so important to have a mirror that you can look into to do this. Then the next thing that we're going to do is take your necklace or neck chain and put that around the base of your neck and let it just sit comfortably. So in a perfect world, if our necks came straight down and then our shoulders came out straight across, it would be really easy to identify that neck point. But because our necks come down and then we get a gradual sloping into our shoulders, that's why it's so important to take a heavyweight chain like this and put it around because that chain will just sit where you naturally are going to call your neck point. And then looking in the mirror, you will start the tape measure. Whoops, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm actually going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to tape it onto my measuring tape like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on or right at the necklace or neck chain like this. And that masking tape will hold just long enough for you to get this measured. And then I'm going to measure out to the mark that I did on my shoulder bone. So I can see that I'm just under five inches long, which is what I am. I'm four and seven eighths inches long. And this is a, um, a length that when you are actually testing your bodice, if you're off by an eighth or a quarter of an inch, that is simply not a big deal to do that refinement when you are in your testing stage. So do your best to get this shoulder length. Then remove the tape from your neck point. Now, the last two measurements are arm length. And again, utilizing your tape measure that has a piece of tape on the end of it, just about drop that, we're going to take the edge of the tape measure and I'm going to place it right on that mark that I made for my shoulder bone and then I'm going to measure down to the pointy bone in my elbow and that's measurement number 10 and then following along the back of my arm I'm going to go down to the hand side of the base of the wrist bone and again if I'm not moving around and just looking in the mirror I can certainly get that tape to be as accurate as possible. So just feel for the bone that's at the base of your wrist and just measure to the hand side of the base of your wrist bone. And that, my friends, is the 11 measurements. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, and I certainly hope that you have, I invite you to join the SureFit Designs community. And you can do that in three easy steps. Number one, make sure to sign up for the SureFit Designs newsletter. And you can do that by going to our website, surefitdesigns.com, and at the bottom of every single page, there is a newsletter sign up form. And when you do, there are free gifts to get you started. Number two, make sure you like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And when you do, you'll get notifications of new videos that I put up. And last but certainly not least is join our international community of like-minded seamstresses in Facebook. We have a closed group. All you need to do is request to join and I will approve you and join the thousands of ladies all over the world who are posting their creations with SureFit designs, helping one another, and in general, having fun. I invite you to join us and have fun too.